In early America, newspapers were stressed as vital to democracy. Madison said that public opinion in a democracy is the real sovereign. And then the Congress passed the Post Office Act, which subsidized newspapers. That was vital to our early history, vital to the first 150 years of our history. By the 1830s, 90% of the volume by weight of material that went through the post were newspapers, but only about 12% of the revenue came from newspapers. That was all due to the subsidies that the early U.S. Congress established. At the end of the um, 19th century, there were about, in, in 1870, there were about 500 news, daily newspapers. By the end of the century, there were something like 2,300 daily newspapers. Tocqueville thought newspapers were the key to the success of American democracy. So um, in all those early years, the newspapers provided um, the, the benefit to the country of diffusion of information. Today, there are plenty of other ways information gets spread about. Plenty, others, plenty, plenty of other sources of diffusion of information. The key role for newspapers today is discovery of information. Bart Gelman, in, his, in some of his um, thinking or speaking and writing about this subject, he said when he um, sees, sees a classification stamp, he thinks of it as a yellow light and not a red light. And the government, very fortunately for the government, it lost the Pentagon Papers case. They are far better off today that they lost that case than they would have been if they'd won it. Because given that they lost the case, newspapers are able and willing to check with the government that the details in a story are not going to inadvertently reveal, let's say, the identity of an agent in Egypt or something like that. And that's, that's done, and that's sort of what Bart meant by his metaphor, it's a yellow light and not a red light. And that's a good practice, as long as journals do not wait too long or lose their vigor because they're checking on whether a particular story will inadvertently do something that they wouldn't want to do. I think the New York Times held that story about warrantless wiretapping that eventually came out in December of 05 for a whole year, and I think that was too long. Um, but if, it's, if that practice is done uh, for a short time, it, it's okay. So the, we have to worry about the future of investigative journalism. Uh, is it going to survive um, given the enormous cost of practicing good investigative journalism? Maybe it's only going to survive in a few newspapers, and is that enough? Maybe it's only going to survive for a few national stories and not for local stories, and would that be unfortunate? It certainly would be.